Cordless drills are now very common. Most people own at least one cordless drill. This particular model is a DeWalt 18 volt drill. This is a very handy piece of kit. You can use this for almost anything. I'm now going to demonstrate some of the features on the drill so that it will make it easier for you to use. The most important thing when you use a drill like this is to wear safety glasses. When you buy a drill like this it will come with instructions, it will tell you to wear safety glasses and gloves. The safety glasses are absolutely essential. Because the drill bits are often made of hardened steel, they are very tough but they are also very brittle. If the bit breaks there is a good chance that it will lodge in your eye. So that's why you should always wear eye protection whenever you use a cordless drill. We're just going to start off by having a look at three different machines. This is an 18 volt machine, that's 12 volt, that is 12 volt. The difference on these two machines is the chuck. This machine has a quarter inch X chuck, which means that it will only hold quarter inch X bits. That limits you to the actual drill bits that you can use. You cannot use a traditional drill bit like that. In this machine you can only use quarter inch X bits which look like that. So it's a handy piece of kit that, it's a very light and good machine to use but you're limited by the chuck on it because it's only a quarter inch X fitting. We're now left with the 12 volt drill driver and the 18 volt combi drill. The difference between these two machines apart from the voltage is that this machine has ammo action. A combi machine always has ammo action on it. A traditional drill driver can only be used for drilling or for putting screws in, it does not have ammo action. As you can see the chuck is in the closed position there. If we press that button with our thumb so it's in reverse and then hold the chuck, you will see that that actually opens up the chuck. Unfortunately, most manufacturers recommend that you don't open and close your chuck that way, although most people do. Once it's opened wide enough, you can then insert the drill bit that you're going to use. And then you can tighten up the chuck. Some cheaper machines have a two-piece chuck where you need to actually hold the chuck with one hand and tighten it with the other. It's highly important when you put a bit in the chuck that it is as tight as you can get it. If you start drilling something and the drill bit is not tight enough, the drill bit tends to get stuck in the workpiece. The chuck will continue to turn which will damage the actual drill bit. You can also damage your chuck. So it's essential that whenever you put a drill bit in there that you tighten up the chuck fully. Most machines have a three position directional switch. If you flick it with your forefinger it will go in the forwards direction. If you flick it with your thumb on the other side all the way across it will go in the anti-clockwise direction or reverse and if you put it in the middle it will actually lock the switch so you can't actually pull the switch or the trigger. The trigger on the machine or the switch is at normally a variable speed. That means the harder you pull the trigger, the faster the machine will go until it reaches its maximum speed for the gear that you are in. On the top of the machine we have the gear selector. So first gear is the slowest gear, but that gear has the most torque. Second gear is the medium speed with medium torque. And third gear is the faster speed with less torque. I'll now demonstrate what happens when you use a machine that isn't quite as powerful when you get the machine in the wrong gear. It's now in the faster speed which is second gear on this machine. And you can see that the machine keeps stopping. That's because it's in the wrong gear and it is struggling. If we put it into first gear which is the slower gear but has more torque you can see that went through easily without stopping 
So the gears on the machines are very important. If you're ever using it and you're doing something under a lot of load, the machine keeps stopping. Just check to make sure you've got it in the correct gear. At the front of the machine there, we have a ring that we can turn. That is the torque control ring. Not only does it control the torque on this model, you can also select to drill with it, or you can also select hammer action. Torque control is something that a lot of people don't quite understand, so I'll give you a demonstration driving in some screws. Because this machine is large and powerful, I can't actually demonstrate the torque control using the screws as I intended. So I'm actually going to use a smaller drill for demonstrating how the torque control works. So I'm just going to flick that button with my forefinger, so we're now in the forwards gear. And I have selected the lowest torque setting, which is 2. I'm now going to proceed to screw some screws into this oiled piece of oak. And you'll notice that that has stopped there. That is because the torque setting is set at 2. If we increase that to 6, you'll see that the screw has gone in further. We'll now increase that to 8. The screw has gone in further still. We'll now increase it to the maximum torque, which is 14. And you'll see that the screw has been driven all the way home. Hopefully that has been a good demonstration on how the torque control works. The first screw was on the very low torque and then on the high torque, the screw went all the way in until it was flush. If we now flick the selector lever with the thumb all the way through, we can then remove the screws. Normally when you're using the drill for drilling, you would have it in the drill position, but on all saws, it's much more beneficial to use the torque selector. That means that if the actual all saw gets jammed, it will actually slip on the torque rather than damaging the machine or damaging you. So it's always a good idea when you're using all saws to use the torque selector. When it comes time to drill masonry, you need a masonry bit and then you need to put the machine into hammer action, which is that symbol there. So that's how to use all the features on a cordless drill, even a combi drill like this with hammer action.